Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm delighted that you joined me. I want to give a big thank you to those of you listening today all around the world. I'm delighted and so grateful that you tuned in. I sure hope you're enjoying a fabulous day and that you're having a fantastic week. Because you know what? In the grand song of the universe, life is very, very short. It's short and sweet and very precious. So, I hope you're making a difference in your own life, because when you do, you also make a difference in someone else's life. Now, a lot of folks want to make their life count for something, and they ask me, Dr. Gloria, how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. Very simple. You make your life count day by day, step by step, moment by moment, every single day. 365 24-7. That's what Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count, is all about. Now, you can learn more about Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count, by visiting my website, the Gloria Burgess website. That's G-L-O-R-I-A, B as in boy, U-R-G-E-S-S dot com. Again, that's Gloria dot com. Or you can visit me on Facebook. And you can find me on Facebook right here at facebook.com forward slash DR for Dr. DR Gloria Burgess, PhD forward slash. Today, I want to talk with you about one of my favorite topics daring to wear your soul on the outside, daring to live out loud. Now, specifically, I'm going to focus on several folks who have stepped up, who said, you know what? I want more in my life. I want to be more. I want to know more. And I want to serve more. I hope these stories about people who have transformed their lives will inspire you as they have inspired me. And If you are inspired, I will share more about how you too can make that same kind of shift in your own life. Later in today's program, I'm going to share some resources with you so you can do exactly that. So you can equip yourself to make the kind of difference in your life that you will hear about in this inspiring story that I want to share with you today. So once again, today's focus is dare to wear your soul on the outside. What does that mean? Well, it means daring to live out loud. So now it's time to sit back and relax. Make yourself a cup of coffee or tea or get yourself a nice tall glass of water. Put your feet up, relax in your favorite chair, or put your earbuds on and go for a walk, (laughs) right? And don't forget to take notes. Okay, because you're going to have to take notes today. You're going to get a lot of great information and we're going to have an amazing time. Now, before I jump into today's show, I want to take just a moment to welcome you. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Dr. Gloria. This is Legacy Living. Make your life count. I'd like to extend a very special welcome to those of you who are joining my show or if you're joining Talk Network Radio for the very first time. You're in for a real treat. I'm so excited to have you listening in today, and I'm deeply honored that you've allowed me to be part of your day so you can be inspired by the ideas and resources to make your life count. Today's program, again is all about daring to wear your soul on the outside. Or as some people say, daring to live out loud. A very important topic so you can enjoy the life you love, a life of joy, and a life of service. One of my favorite poets, Muriel Rickheiser, reminds us that the world is not made up of atoms. 
Oh, no. The world is not made up of atoms. Well, if it's not made up of atoms, then what is it made of? Well, I'm so glad you asked, <laughs> right? It's made up of stories. Our world is made up of stories. I just love that. Now, let's just think about that for a moment. No matter where you live in the world, you hear stories, right? You hear stories from the time you're born. You hear stories as a little babe in arms, right? Stories you hear around the dinner table or around the hearth. We hear stories when we go to school, stories in the lunchroom, stories when we're ready to leave school, when we're ready to graduate and perhaps move on to college. And then when we apply to college, they ask us to share stories about why we want to go to college <laughs> and what we hope to accomplish there. And then once we arrive at college, we hear stories about the college or the university that we're attending. And then more stories as we move through our studies and then into the workplace. And there we hear story after story after story. Stories are a very big part of our lives. So much so, we don't even realize their presence or their power in our lives sometimes. Did you know that stories are how we make meaning, how we make sense of the world. Stories help us chart and navigate the many waters of our lives. They help us as we move through the many moments, hours, and days of our lives. In cultures all over the world, stories are revered as medicine. Stories as medicine. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, Stories are called medicine and revered as such because they help to ground us. And when we lose our way, as we often do in our fast-paced, ever-evolving world, stories are the medicine that enable us, that help us to come back home. Come back home, which means realigning with ourselves and coming back into harmony with who we are and whose we are, with who we belong to. Now, this is true whether we're talking about an individual, a family, a community, a team, or an organization. I was with a client just a couple of days ago, and our specific focus was on team building. Now, the resources we used to get to team building, to get from here to there, were stories. In other words, we took a look at what needed to be surfaced, meaning what stories needed to be surfaced and made visible to be discussed so that we could become intentional about doing what was necessary to become the best team possible, right? We wanted to put our best foot forward, so to speak, to do our best work in serving the organization's stakeholders. So once again, stories are, are powerful medicine. Poet and author Mark Nepo reminds us that stories are small doses of what matters. And he says, it is the telling that releases the medicine, the telling that soothes our pain and shares our joy. I just love that. I'm going to repeat it. It is in the telling of the stories, right, that releases the medicine the telling that soothes our pain and shares our joy. In the key Swahili language, the words habari gani mean, what's the news or what's happening now? In this podcast and in several others, I will share with you small doses of what's happening now, of what matters in the lives of everyday ordinary people, including some people who are very close to me. In fact, I want to share one particular story with you today. And this story that I will share breathes the timeless universal truths of what I call the seven sacred promises. They are truths that mentor us in ways of being that are older than time. Truths that breathe just beneath the surface of our everyday busy lives. These are the truths that we make visible in our life. We can actually draw on them with conscious intention to shape our daily choices, actions, 
and decisions. So, what are the seven sacred promises? They are gratitude, faith, love, vision, integrity, creative action, and legacy. Now, you hear me talk about all of these promises frequently on this podcast in one way or another. Today, you will hear more about those sacred promises through an inspiring story I'm going to share with you. This story is a small dose of what matters, and it's taken from some of the big themes in one of my poems, and that poem is called Song to Myself. Song to Myself. Now, all of the stories that I'm going to share with you over the next several weeks, and this story in particular, are about people who are just like you and me. Now, how is that? Because we are all people who care. We care about ourselves. We care about one another. We care about leaving the world a little better off than the way we found it. As stewards of the future, we dare to wear our souls on the outside, to be in right relationship with ourself, and to be in right relationship with the people around us. As instruments of soul, we sound the way for others in our immediate circles and beyond. Did you know that you, you are a magnificent story? And as you live your life, you are actually painting. You are painting on the canvas of your soul. Now, at the end of my sharing these inspiring stories over the next few weeks, I'm going to invite you to give voice to your own story. So you too can respond to that important question. Habari Ghani, what's happening now? And I want to inspire you to draw from the deep wellspring of your life and the transformative power of your own true voice. Until then, I trust that you will be moved by these stories of hope, radiance, and celebration. As you encounter each individual soul, I want you to feel that sweet shimmer of your own story and hear the resonance and powerful medicine of your own true voice. I trust that you will bask in the joy and inspiration of the stories, allowing them to illuminate your sacred life path. I also trust that you will accept the gifts they offer so that you can pass these stories on and faithfully serve the people around you by lighting the path for someone else. So, again, I invite you to get cozy, sip on a cup of tea or your favorite coffee, and join me by the hearth. Join me at the fire to hear the good news. I will begin this story as I will other stories, with a brief excerpt from my poem, Song to Myself. I want to know if you can look into the eyes of the young woman who sleeps with fear each night, the one who dared to walk away from the hands that pummeled her. I want to know if you can share her pain. Now, I want you to meet a very special person. She's a dear friend. Her name is Jean. Jean is a woman who used to sleep with fear each night. But more than anything, she wanted her life back. She was tired of being held captive by fear. When she was ready to dare to wear her soul on the outside, when she was really ready to to live out loud, She asked me to work with her as her coach. Here is Jean's amazing story. When we first started working together, Jean was just completing a six-year learning journey. During those years, she was learning what she needed to become a hospice professional. She devoted herself to developing the necessary skills, enriching her character qualities, and learning about spiritual practices to become the best hospice care provider she could be. 
At that time, her dream was to coach and train other hospice workers. In fact, she wanted to start her own business dedicated to growing other hospice professionals, overseeing and caring for their personal, professional, and spiritual development. Jean sailed through her six years of training and confidently worked for several years as a hospice worker for a large health care network. However, when she began to seriously consider launching her own business, she simply froze. In fact, she was absolutely immobilized, paralyzed with fear, utterly crippled, stopped dead in her tracks by her rather loud chorus of inner critics. Now, most of us have experienced something like this at some point in our own lives. Thankfully, and to her credit, Jean recognized that she was stuck, and she was simply unable to move forward with her dream, with her personal vision. So she reached out and sought coaching for herself. Together, we created a plan for her so she could delve more deeply into what she needed to make a shift, to make a difference in her life. We also focused on specific practices she would need to cultivate and integrate into her life. We decided to focus on primarily one of the practices. We also included another one, but the primary focus was gratitude, and then the other focus was on sanctuary. Now, Jean's first task was to face her fear, right? to confront her chorus of critical voices. That meant she had to turn off the switch to actually disengage that chorus of critics. Then she had to commit to escort them out of her life once and for all. In addition to other spiritual resources, Jean committed to a gratitude practice that included appreciation, compassion, and forgiveness. Now, when I spoke with Jean to learn about what's happening on her journey, I greeted her with Habari Ghani. Hey, what's the news? Listen, as she tells us more, as Jean shares with us a small dose of what matters. In my practice of gratitude, I learned that appreciation, compassion, and forgiveness have presence. And each of these spiritual practices has a shape, a texture, a weight, and color which continues to instruct and guide me. Jean's courageous and loving confrontation of her inner critics took many, many months of dedicated, focused, faithful work on her part. Her focus and faithfulness ultimately led her to a significant breakthrough. During one of our coaching sessions, she said, Gloria, this was some of the most difficult yet joyous work I've ever done. To bring closure to her many months of working on reparation and forgiveness, Jean created a ceremony, a very special ceremony of gratitude to honor her past, to reinvigorate her present, and to celebrate her newfound freedom to now move boldly towards her dream. She gave me permission to share part of her ceremony with you. Jean says, tonight I create a ceremony to burn the hateful negative words of the choir in my mind. I bring forward anyone who has a voice in this choir. One by one, I honor, I lovingly thank, and I let go of the voices that don't serve to lift me up. As I let go of each voice, I pick up a small slip of paper with that person's name on it, my painful memory associated with him or her, and a positive affirmation to replace the negative painful memory. Then I burn the piece of paper in a special vessel. I call it my burning bowl. With each piece of burning paper, I release the pain, sadness, hurt, and anger from my spirit and from the cells of my body. With each piece of burning paper, I turn off the volume of a hurtful voice and turn up the voice 
of my capable, strong, resilient self. With each piece of burning paper, I say these words. In reverence and love, I thank you for your presence in my life. You didn't intend to hurt the soul of my child, but she was injured. She carries your words with her. I know that I'm blessed by the good and the bad, and I pray that the blessings of gratitude will continue to be revealed. Now I return you into the ground of your life lived by you. As of today, I am free of your judgments and grief. I am free of the burden within my soul. Then Jean said, I imagine myself putting a rose over the heart and in the hands of my beloveds. After the flame shrinks to a faint glow, I stand in my dimly lit room and I allow my soul to radiate outward for all to see. I am free from the voices of pain, sadness, hurt, and anger. I am free to believe in my goodness, my abilities, and my connection to God. All is deep. All is mine. As my spirit heals, I can shine. I will open to the healing of others. I am a beacon of light into this world. Over the next few months, and really during the past few years, Jean continued to be blessed by new insights and revelations. As her journey unfolds, she continues to be reminded that new roses will indeed grow from her old wounds. She actually perceives their opening buds in the questions she allowed herself to live into. What are those questions? Well, here are some of the questions she asked herself. What reward did I receive from the messages I chose to keep with me all these years? Another question, do I want that reward to control my life now? What spiritual practice will I follow instead? As Jean continues to enrich her learning about gratitude, she rejoices and revels in the rich harmonies of appreciation, compassion, and forgiveness. One afternoon, while we were enjoying coffee, she shared some of her reflections and learning with me. Gloria, These past few months, I've been very silent inside, sitting with God in patience and wonder. I am beginning to understand what others see in me, a person with a huge heart full of love for others. And now I am growing in love for myself. May I continue on this sacred path until I can feel that same respect and love for myself as I have for others, and to feel it with ease and grace. May I continue to enjoy the full measure of this sanctuary of silence within my soul. May I continue to celebrate the Spirit of God within me and feel love's holy light within my soul. Shortly after her gratitude ceremony, Jean composed this praise poem to celebrate herself and the healing power of gratitude and sanctuary. She says, I celebrate, I celebrate, I celebrate the spirit of God within me. My voice sings loud, my voice sings true. My voice sings of me. I celebrate. I celebrate. I celebrate the spirit of God within me. I feel the light within my soul. I feel the voice of me. I celebrate. 
I celebrate. I celebrate the spirit of God within me. I am what I was created for. I am the woman. I am. I am a woman of size. I am ego free. I celebrate. I celebrate. I celebrate the spirit of God within me. I am free. I am free of the voices within me. There is only room for me. I celebrate. I celebrate. I celebrate the spirit of God within me. I just love that story. Jean's miracles continue to flow, creating a ripple effect in her own life, in her family, and beyond. Why? Because she said yes to God's legacy for her. For Jean, wearing her soul on the outside is something she can now do every single day, no matter where she is or who she's with. Gloria, I can't imagine living my life any other way. Thank you. Thank you for walking with me on my journey and for helping me dare to wear my soul on the outside. Now, I began Jean's story with these lines from my poem, Song to Myself. I want to know if you can look into the eyes of the young woman who sleeps with fear each night, the one who dared to walk away from the hands that pummeled her. I want to know if you can share her pain. You know, Confronting and dealing with our fears makes all the difference, doesn't it? If we let fear hold us captive, it will steal our joy. It will suck the life out of our very bones. But when we say, hey, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. When we say enough is enough, when we reach out for support so we can confront and deal and face our fears, that's when we begin the process of restoring ourselves, of restoring our birthright, of restoring our love and faith so we can be true to ourselves and restore the amazing power of our own story and the amazing power, the healing power of our own true voice. Well, I certainly hope that this story about Jean and her learning journey has inspired you today. I know it's inspired me. Now, I want to share my entire poem with you so that you can hear how Jean's story fits into the overall context of the poem. Song to Myself It doesn't matter to me what you do or where you work. I want to know who you are when the sun goes down and if you are willing to put everything on the line to fulfill your soul's desire. It doesn't matter to me how much bread you can afford to put on your own table. I want to know if you will knead and wait and bake the bread and share your blessings at somebody else's table. I want to know if you can look into the eyes of the young woman who sleeps with fear each night, the one who dared to walk away from the hands that pummeled her. I want to know if you can share her pain. It doesn't matter to me what neighborhood you live in or what kind of car you drive. I want to know what drives you, 
What compels you to follow your soul's longing? I want to know what pierces your heart, awakens you at night, and inspires you to devote yourself to whomever or whatever moves you. I want to know how many times you've opened your heart and extended a hand to your homeless sister or brother. I want to know if you will sit in the quiet, dark hours between midnight and dawn, listening to another's heart song. It doesn't matter to me how many unspeakable secrets you have. I want to know if you will share your secrets to liberate your demons so they don't devour you or those you love. I want to know if you will risk looking foolish to embrace your bliss. I want to know if you will grasp the sleeve of a nameless elder stumbling on his way and lead him in from the cold. I want to know if you will throw away your cloak and show your heart, if you will dare to wear your soul on the outside. It doesn't matter to me how many mountains you've climbed or will climb. I want to know if you've fallen down in the valley of despair. I want to know if you've scarred your knees on the stones of self-abandonment. I want to know how long you've been hidden in the shadows of hypocrisy, prejudice, addiction, abuse. I want to know if you will stop to light a candle and pray with others who will surely wander there. It doesn't matter to me what you say you will do for others. I want to know if you will act with courage and conviction if you will daily cradle the frail hand of your mother when she no longer knows your name. I want to know if you will look into the hazel, gray, or ebony eyes of a stranger and say yes, yes, to affirm your sister, your brother, yourself. I want to know if you will take the time to be still, call the names and pass the cup to honor the ancestors who cleared a path and broke new ground for you and your children. It doesn't matter to me that you have a past. I want to know if you will celebrate your present, if you will take a stand, declare yourself, Sing, I am, boldly and with rejoicing, not only to the stars at night, but to anyone, anywhere, without apologies or regrets. Wouldn't it be wonderful <laughs> if we could all take a stand and declare ourselves Declare ourselves and sing, I am boldly and with rejoicing. Declare ourselves by lifting up and celebrating the awesome, incredible power of our own stories, our own true voice. Because you know what? That's how God made us. That's how God made us. He did not make us to cower or to hide out or to believe what the world would have us believe, that we're missing something, that we're insufficient, that we're not enough. We are children of the Most High. We are made to stand up and be counted. And when you can stand up and declare yourself, guess what? You can help somebody else do the same because you are actually giving them permission. When you make that kind of difference in your own life, you can make that kind of difference in somebody else's life too. So that's how you do it. That's how it's done, day by day, 
step-by-step, moment-by-moment, smile-by-smile, every single day, 365, 24-7. Now you can learn more about the ideas and the story that I just shared with you today. You can also find resources to equip and inspire you to make your life count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. That's GloriaBurgess.com, the Gloria Burgess website. And as I've mentioned before, if you love to be inspired, you can actually subscribe to my inspirations right on my website. Just scroll down a little bit, look on the right sidebar until you see the place to add your email address to subscribe to my weekly inspirations. It's that simple. Each week, you'll get a lovely image, a lovely photograph, and a short quotation that inspires you. Now, if you missed any part of this week's podcast or last week's show, or any show for that matter, you can listen at your convenience. You can even listen on the go. Check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. Okay, that's www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. If you want to be the change you seek, be sure to listen to this podcast again and again, and be sure to tell somebody. You can find me on iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. You can also find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And again, you can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash DR for Dr. DR Gloria Burgess, PhD forward slash. You can also hear and see me by visiting the TEDx website and listening to one of my TED Talks. Just type in my name, Gloria Burgess, and find me there. Now, before I close today, I want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's show, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's all about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time right here on Talk Network Radio for another show of Legacy Living Make Your Life Count. We're here again next week, Talk Network Radio. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day, and remember, make the days in your life count. God bless. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day. And be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count.